This is my SWT PC 6800 computer system. I recently acquired this in the purchase of a storage unit full of vintage electronics and electrical components ranging from 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, it's a whole lot of stuff and this particular unit is, is something I wanted to focus on. It's it, it has some other accessories and uh, lots of documentation which uh, take a minute to show here. Um, guide for uh, basic, 4K basic instructions from uh, SWTPC themselves. A bunch of full-size prints of the system as well as some custom ones that the engineer made. A whole binder of system software uh, manuals and this big old guy right here of hardware uh, manuals. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of this stuff is available online already, but I'm happy to have the uh, physical copies and the originals that you know the, the the guy had marked up while he was building this stuff. Just a quick overview of the accessories that it came with. Here's the uh, mini floppy disk system, five and a quarter inch floppies um, that it came with, and I'll be going through this at some point, but uh, for now we're not going to focus on it. Also has the uh, CT1024 terminal system kit, also known as the TV typewriter 2. Uh, granted, not, none of this stuff was labeled other than the actual uh, computer and floppy disk system itself, so this, I mean, it just took a little bit of searching to figure out what that was. I mean, you could definitely tell it was some type of terminal, just at a glance, but um, the non-standard connections definitely threw me for a loop. And this one was a little more difficult to figure out because um, it was just this circuit board with really not very much on there. The only thing I, I could recognize was the power supply section on this is very similar. In fact, I think it's the exact same power supply used in the uh, TV Typewriter 2 um, that uh, the gentleman repurposed here for this um, GT6144 graphics terminal kit. So the idea behind this was to add um, black or white rectangles that you could turn on and off like pixels on the screen um, in addition to the, the terminal uh, ASCII uh, letters and, and numbers. So there's some custom custom stuff done here, but uh, we'll, we'll get into this eventually. So as you can see, the front isn't super clean. Um, it looks like it's had some kind of tape placed across it. Maybe it was a label or something. And uh, this is interesting. This is not uh, standard. This this is a baud rate selector with uh, in indicators for different baud rates. This was definitely added by the engineer. There's really not much to see on the side. Uh, the entire top and side part of the chassis is made of this like perforated steel so you can see through it. Um, there's no holes or hol screw holes but there are no screws holding this on. It was actually just taped together. I've already cut this tape so we can open it up and take a look inside. Also not very much to see on the rear either. Uh, just the 120 AC power input and these access holes for running accessory cables like that floppy drive I showed earlier or for uh, serial cards. Taking a look up on top you can see the tape running across it and uh, you can actually see inside to a lot of these cards here but there is a sticker here and most of it has been removed but we can still see partially that it said uh, something based probably 6800 based 32k computer um, dual floppy disk drive something up something with 9 inch or 7 inch oh monitor I, I bet that's a 9 inch monitor that I, I don't actually have that but that's okay I've got other monitors that will work so let's open this thing up also notice this um, fan that had been mounted in there now this was definitely an addition. I'm, I'm 
assuming that these uh, SRAM cards, as well as the CPU card, probably ran a little hot. And this was his attempt at keeping it cool. Right here on the power supply circuit, spliced in after the fuse, is a 120 AC receptacle that that fan was likely plugged into. Um, maybe it was after the power switch, at least I would, I would hope it was. So what we can look at here is a number of cards. Um, I will pull them out, but for now, just kind of give an overview. I believe that this one is an 8K card based on the switch that it has. This is the CPU card. There's definitely some custom stuff going on here with the uh, dead bug type of connections being made. The upside down IC. And then these four, I believe, are uh, 4K memory cards. So the, the sticker on the, the case said 32K. So I think these are, they total to 16. That's 8K. And this guy is a custom 8K card. It's actually wire wrapped. You can see all of this intricate wire wrap work on the back. It's uh, very impressive, kind of a lost art. And down here, we've got the floppy controller card and two MP-S serial controller cards. So uh, digging through the storage unit, I, I did find a couple other boxes that have related hardware. I might as well show you that right now before we get into tearing this thing up and seeing if we can get it to power on. So one of the boxes contains this box, which uh, is from Southwest Technical Products, uh, SWTPC. Um, there's their logo. And it says it's an MP-L. It was written board complete, not jumpered. Um, an MP-L is the uh, parallel interface card, which it wasn't present here, so I was kind of excited to find this box. But it's not in the box. Instead, we have this uh, numpad type of thing. Uh, Looks like you could enter hex values and, and load high and low registers. Um, and then all of these connectors, which these are actually kind of handy because these are the types of uh, connectors used on the parallel card and, and the serial card, so I can I can make cables if, since, if, if I can't find them. And a couple other interesting things are these two circuit boards right here. And these are upgrades for the TV typewriter too. This one says TVT2 2K memory, and this one is a mod that has to be completed in order to um, shoot. What is it? Oh, add 64 characters to the screen rather than just 32. So this is a really cool mod. It looks like it was never completed. But once I get all of this stuff working, I will absolutely give this thing a shot. And in this box, labeled spare computer ICs. Here we find the MP-L card completed and perhaps jumpered, perhaps not. That will uh, to be determined. And also this uh, MP-C control card, which is the uh, kind of earlier, predates the serial card. Essentially, it's a um, bit banged serial interface with some extra I.O. Um, and then there are a minimum tensile strength of spring materials. I guess that's good to know. Some spare ICs, just like the box said it has. Um, most interestingly, the uh, spare 6800 CPU, as well as a few other components. So these, these might come in handy. So let's start pulling it apart. I suppose I'll start with the uh, I.O. on the back here. Let me get this uh, floppy drive interface out. Didn't take too much effort to remove. Let's move on to the serial interface cards. There are two of them here. Looks like we're bending up the board here a little bit. 
we go. Mm, it's a good connection. Which I think a lot of these actually have problems with these connectors not being gold plated and they uh, corrode over time, so we might run into issues with that. Let's carefully remove this beast of a project that this gentleman had. I guess I could mention his name is Jack. I'm gonna go ahead and withhold his the rest his last name and address that he Wow, that is incredible. Just wanted to admire that. I should go chip side down on that just to protect the pins. Eight K board here. Man, it's gonna put up a fight. I might just do the rest of these off camera. I forgot to mention on these spare ICs, there's one here that's been labeled um, old Micbug. And that was the original ROM that was included on the CPU card. And as you'll see here on the removed CPU card, um, the ROM that's in place is not that. And that there was a cut trace and a, uh, a jumper added on, I think it's pin 15. Anyway, it's it's also described in the manual. So it's it's interesting to see some of these mods on this board. So here it is all pulled apart. Um, this is this homemade, eight, I believe, 8K card, um, CPU card, with definitely some mods going on here other than just that ROM upgrade to the uh, SWT bug ROM monitor. And then 8K card. And then here are four nearly identical 4K cards. Um, difference is just the uh, PCB color. Uh, and our IO cards, here's our now empty MP-B motherboard. 